Normally, uh, I would start by saying uh, good afternoon to everybody, but uh, there's nothing good about the carnage that's actually occurring on South Australian roads so far uh, this calendar year. 2023 is the second worst start to the number of lives lost on South Australian roads in the last 10 years. It's only surpassed by 2019 when we had 15 lives lost. That is an incredible toll on the families that have lost loved ones so far this year. The second worst start to a year in the last 10 years. In fact, there's been a life lost on South Australian roads in less than every third day of this year so far. That is completely unacceptable. And I feel sorry for the families of the loved ones who've been lost so far this year who may see this press conference because it's only going to reinforce the trauma and the pain that they're experiencing right now in addition to the 71 families from last year and the 99 families from the year before. This week in particular has been particularly horrific in terms of lives lost on our South Australian roads. On Monday, an 18-year-old male lost his life when his car hit a tree in the southeast. Tuesday, a 25-year-old female lost her life when her car rolled on Port Wayfield Road. Last night, a 27-year-old male lost his life when his car left the road and collided with a tree. And just this morning at Wallaroo, a 49-year-old local male has lost their life when their vehicle left the road and collided with a tree. Eight of the crashes so far this year have been on regional roads yet again, over-representing the number of crashes in the regions that occur every year in South Australia. Overwhelmingly, as we try to educate the public about on an ongoing basis, two out of three lives lost on country roads are country people on average. And that trend certainly continues this year as well. Unfortunately, at a much faster rate than what it has been in previous years. In addition to the lives lost, we're also seeing an increase in the number of serious injuries. And it can really only be a matter of seconds or inches, which is the difference between someone losing their life or suffering lifelong serious injuries, which require ongoing care by families or carers throughout a lifetime. Yesterday in particular, there was a crash between a vehicle and a truck near Two Wells, where two older people have been hospitalised with critical and serious injuries. And we're awaiting the outcome of their injuries, hoping, of course, that they survive. And also yesterday, there was a crash at Oaklands Park in a car park involving an older person who has also suffered some serious injuries. And again, our thoughts are with that family, hoping that that person can make a full recovery as well. The thing that concerns us the most is that of the deaths that have occurred so far in this year, the drivers are the people who have died. And our initial investigations indicate that they are largely at fault for their own demise. Our investigations so far tell us that distraction, again, becomes a leading cause of lives lost on South Australian roads. Speeding continues to be an issue. Not wearing a seatbelt continues to be an issue. And so far, the results have shown us that drink driving also continues to be an issue and a contributing factor to why people are losing their lives on South Australian roads. Now, from SAPOL's perspective, we continue to maintain the rage in terms of protecting our people on our roads and enforcing the road rules and providing as much education to the public as we possibly can to warn you of the dangers associated with driving on the roads when you engage in risk-taking behaviour. It is abundantly clear to us that if you engage in risk-taking behaviour, like I've just mentioned, dangerous driving, speeding, alcohol and drugs, seatbelts or distracted driving, you are much more likely to wind up in a crash that either kills you or some innocent person 
or causes serious injury crashes. This has to stop, and it has to stop now. <coughs> As I said, this is the equal second worst start on South Australian roads in terms of lives lost and serious injuries. We are imploring everybody to do the right thing on the roads. Slow down, drive at the speed limit, wear your seatbelt. I know it beggars belief that people still don't wear seatbelts these days, but that's the harsh reality. Don't drink and drive. Particularly those males in our 20 to 40 category who can be selfish pricks and choose to drink and drive, don't drink and drive. Distracted driving. I know we all see people driving whilst they're using their phones. It is a leading cause of why people are dead on our roads, and particularly in regional areas. Don't think just because you live in the area and you know the road that you can take additional risks because you will come unstuck. Again, for our part, we are continuing our road safety enforcement focus. We will be ramping up our education focus and we are currently reviewing what else we can do in our enforcement space to continue to keep people on task and to, to continue to keep people safe in our roads. However, it is everybody's responsibility to do the right thing on South Australian roads. And if we are going to stop the carnage that has occurred so far, it's dependent upon you, your family members and your friends to do the right thing on our roads at all times. Otherwise, at this rate, in the next three days, you could lose a loved one. So please do the right thing on South Australian roads. So some of the research uh, that we have done in particular with, uh, in relation to country roads is that there's a range of different things that our, uh, that our country people um, believe. Some of those things are that they do know their roads better and it's not them that's getting killed on the roads, it's the metropolitan people coming up to the country that don't know the roads and, and so therefore they're the ones that are actually dying. The reality is two out of three country people die on country roads and that's for a range of factors as well. Speeding, inattention, uh, dangerous driving, drink and drug driving, yeah, and seat belts in particular uh, in the country areas is a significant issue for us. And this is again what we want to um, reinforce the message with. You look at the lives lost so far this week, and all four uh, lives lost have been on regional roads. Uh, just in this week, three people driving by themselves have driven into a tree and lost their life, and the third person has robbed their car. Um, you know, what is it that people? What message? What is the message that people are not getting here, that forces them to take responsibility and think about their behaviour behind the wheel and stop thinking perhaps that they're invincible or that, you know, this won't happen to them? Because clearly, it's happening to a lot more people this year than it should be. Yeah, sure. I emphasise that our, our investigations are at the very early stage in all of these crashes as well. But in five of the crashes so far, um, we suspect that distraction is a contributing cause. Now that could also um, uh, be a factor of fatigue as well. So there's five of the um, crashes have got a contributing factor of um, distraction. Four, uh, we're looking at the circumstances involving dangerous driving. So whether that is overtaking the danger, whether it is behaving in a vehicle um, in a way that's um, you know, meant to drive, whether it's um, uh, basically putting other road users at risk, whether it's cutting them off, etc. But we are looking at dangerous driving as being part of it as well. Two we know are due to excessive speed. And one we already know um, involves alcohol. And so these figures you know, may actually also change as these investigations progress. Now, sometimes the toxicology reports will come back and show that there is a presence of alcohol or other drugs in the person's system which you know, are not known at the time but may actually also be a contributing factor as well. And I guess this is the, the concern for us is that these things aren't changing. 
you know, these causes of why people are losing their lives on our roads remain the same. And the warnings and the messaging and the enforcement remain the same as well. Distraction was a major factor and has been a major factor for many years. Speeding was off the chart last year and continues to be an issue this year. Seatbelts, um, I can't go on enough about seatbelts. And then the obvious things around drink and drug driving. And I think the other really, really disappointing thing, and I think you know, the community would share this view as well, is you get a young person who leaves their brain behind and drives at 253 kilometres an hour on any road is completely unacceptable by anyone's measure. And then the following day, you have another example of someone who's driving up around 200 kilometres an hour on a regional road with other factors involved. Um, I don't know anybody who thinks that that's um, an acceptable way to behave in our society. I don't think anyone would say that that's a respectable attitude towards anybody else who's doing the right thing on our roads and trying to get home safely. So what we would say is that um, these crashes are preventable. They are absolutely preventable. There's a senseless loss of life on South Australian roads because these crashes are preventable. People are speeding. People are letting themselves deliberately be distracted when they're driving. People are drinking before they drive. And people are unbelievably not wearing their seatbelts while they drive. And the messaging has been consistent and clear over many years. I don't know how much we can more we can sort of reinforce this with people. But if you engage in these risk-taking behaviours, your chance of being killed or seriously injured in a crash, or like I said, killing or seriously injuring an innocent person on our roads is exponentially higher. And it's a pretty simple thing to solve. These, all of these crashes are preventable. Do you know what? Um, we take our responsibility really seriously, obviously. Um, we're as impacted by... Uh, this road trauma, not as much as families. I'd never never say that because it is horrendous, the trauma that families experience by losing a loved um, one on our roads. But none of us are immune to these things. You know, we put out research pieces so that we can actually target the right messages for people so that we actually reach in and actually make the message effective so we educate people. So we give every single person out there the chance to be educated on the dangers of, and of risk-taking behaviours on our roads. We then enforce the road safety. So, you know, I've often said in the past that if you get pulled over for speeding or for drink driving uh, or for using your phone and you cop a big fine or you end up going to court, well, maybe you're the lucky one. Maybe we actually got to you in time before you killed yourself or somebody else. It's a really simple message. So we are going to have a look at what our marketing campaigns to do, uh, can do to actually enhance that education piece. We are going to look at our road safety enforcement calendar to look at the specific operations that we are doing to see if there's any more we can do in that space to enforce the law and to make sure people are doing the right thing. But my overriding message to people is all these crashes are preventable if you do the right thing on South Australian roads. Apart from those targeted campaigns that we do periodically, would you like to see more and more presence of the road safety patrols on the road? Um, we have a, a very strong presence uh, in relation to road safety on our roads at all times. Uh, every single marked patrol vehicle can pull you over at any time of the day or night, anywhere that you are. In fact, unmarked police vehicles can pull you over any time of the day or night, no matter where you are in our state. You can be alcohol tested anywhere in our state. You can pretty much be drug tested anywhere in our state. So, you know, we are uh, maintaining a really highly visible presence on our roads. We continue to have very high levels of enforcement activity. So this is not like, um, say, Paul's dropping the ball here in terms of enforcement or education. We are pushing a lot of information out there and we are doing our level best to try and prevent people from dying on our roads. But at the end of the day, the person who gets behind the wheel or jumps on the motorbike or is crossing the road or riding a push bike has to take responsibility for their own behaviours on the roads when it comes to their safety their passengers' safety and other road users' safety. Are there, um, are there going to be any more operations or media operations to avoid a highly risk death toll in the next, or next month? 
Yes, yeah, so I'll be reinforcing with our people um, the need to really focus on our country roads and certainly with our traffic services branch we do continually focus on policing regional roads in support of the regional police. So we will be continuing to do that. Uh, and in addition, uh, drink and drug driving campaigns, we know that, or, and people know that we put those out. So I'll be reviewing how often we're putting those out as dedicated operations. But I do remind people, you drink and drive, you can be caught anytime, anywhere in this state. And our people will be highly focused on making sure that people are doing the right thing. Um, at this stage, I understand that there are still restrictions around the Wallaroo uh, crash site. Um, these investigations are complex investigations and can take some time, but we will keep the public updated via our socials uh, in relation to the um, access to and, and, and around the area. Yeah, look, um, to say I'm worried is a, is a complete understatement. Um, some people would say that last year with 71 lives lost was a good year. It's, it's not a good year. There's 71 families out there who it's the worst year of their lives probably. So there is no good year when it comes to road safety. But the fact that we're losing a life on South Australian roads in less than every third day so far this year is completely alarming, which is why we wanted to speak with people today to reinforce the message about how dangerous it can be on the roads, particularly if you do the wrong thing, and implore people to do the right thing on the roads, and let you know that we will be out there catching those that choose to make the wrong decisions. Uh, no, I don't. The investigation is still ongoing. I don't actually have any outcomes of that particular incident at this particular point in time. Thank you.